In this video, we're going to talk about the math topics of the arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences, and these are usually categorized as function questions on the ACT. So when we're talking about sequences in general, we're talking about trying to find a pattern. And we can have some questions on the ACT that are as straightforward as just asking for a particular term in a sequence. And we're going to talk about two types of sequences. We have the arithmetic sequences, which deal with adding or subtracting, and geometric sequences, which is usually multiplying or dividing, or you can think about just multiplying by a fraction. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. You may have a question that just asks, what is the next term in the arithmetic sequence? 5, 2, negative 1, negative 4, and we're looking for that next term. There's already a clue in the question. It tells us it's an arithmetic sequence, so we're adding or subtracting to get the next term. So the first step is we want to find what the pattern is. And we can start with the first two terms that we're given. From 5 to 2, we know that we subtract 3 to get that. And just to confirm, from 2 to negative 1, we subtract 3. From negative 1 to negative 4, we're going to subtract 3. So it would make sense from negative 4 to the missing number, we would subtract 3. And we get negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Let's take a look at another example. This question asks, what's the missing term in the sequence? And it's the second term in the sequence. So we can still make use of the other terms that were given. We don't know if it's an arithmetic or geometric, so we have to do some evaluating to find the pattern. If we look at from 18 to 54, we could add 36 to get that, or you could multiply 18 by 3. So to go from 54 to 162, we have to add 108, which is not 36. So we already know this is not an arithmetic sequence. We're not adding to get to the next term. But we can see when we multiply 54 by 3, we get 162. So that would tell us that maybe 3 is our multiplication factor. So to go from 2 to the missing spot, we'd multiply 2 by 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. And we could also check to make sure that that term that's given, the 18, is correct by saying 6 times 3 is 18, and that is correct. So that gives us that missing term of 6. Now we could also have some more challenging problems. You may be asked to find terms that are even farther along in the sequence. In the cases that we had, it was like the fifth term or the second term, but you could even be asked for the 105th term. That would be a lot to add up numbers to get all the way to that many of terms in the sequence. You could also be asked to sum a specific number of terms in a sequence. So in addition to finding any missing terms, you would have to add them up. And that could be a little challenging if we're doing each term by term by term. So let's take a look at what we have to do. We have to know the relationships in the sequence to be able to answer any of these types of questions finding the pattern. With an arithmetic sequence, we know that each term is equal to the previous term plus some kind of common difference. We're going to use D to represent that. And this is what we give as our recursive formula. And I point that wording out right there because recursive formula, that term was actually used in one of the ACT tests, and I don't want that to confuse you. That just means you find the, the next term by taking the previous term and adding the common difference to it. We can do that if we're looking for earlier terms, like maybe the fifth or the sixth term, because we can add those. But when we have to find the 500th term, it's going to be harder to use the recursive formula if you're only given, like, let's say, the first five terms. So in our previous example, we were given this sequence. Let's take a look and see if we can find the recursive formula. We started with 5. That was our initial value. And we found the common difference to be a negative 3. We subtracted 3 from each of the previous terms. Now let's find the general rule. And we can use this when we're looking for any value within the sequence if we're looking for the fifth value in a sequence, or if we're looking for the 105th value in the sequence, 
using this type of explicit formula will help you with this. And I use the word explicit here because this is a word that has shown up on the ACT. So just to be familiar when we're talking about the general rule, we're talking about an explicit formula. So when we want to find any value in that sequence, we're going to use this formula. A sub n, where n is the number of the value we're looking for, is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So our a sub 1 is our first term that we're given. n is that value that we're looking for, that ordered value, and d is our common difference. So let's take this explicit formula that we've just derived and let's use it with the example problem we were looking at earlier where we were looking for the fifth term in the sequence. So we say a sub 5 is what we're looking for. And what we do is we took our initial value, which was 5. We're going to add to that our common difference, which we found to be negative 3, and multiply that by n minus 1, 5 minus 1, which is 4. And so we simplify here. We get 5 minus 12, and we get negative 7, which is the same value we got when we looked at it in a recursive way, when we looked at each value leading up to the fifth value. Here, all we need is that initial value, the common difference, and we can find any value in the sequence. Now let's take a look at our geometric sequences again. Remember, to find a geometric sequence, we're going to multiply by the same number. And here is our formula for this. If we're looking for the term x sub n, we're going to set that equal to our original value a, and we're going to multiply that by r, which is our common term, raised to whatever order of the term we are in, n minus 1 of that. So previously we were given the example where we were looking for this second term in this sequence. And we started with a 2. That's our a value here. We found the common factor, what we multiplied each previous term by, to be 3. So we can use this rule and see how that works. We'll plug in each value if we're looking for the second value here, x sub 2. That's equal to 2 times 3 raised to the n minus 1, which is 2 minus 1. And we simplify and get 2 times 3, which is 6. This is using the formula. Make use of whatever is easiest for you. If you understand using the formula, sometimes it's easier to just look at the sequence and try to figure it out between the differences between each of the terms. We do have to make use of a formula when we are asked for terms that are later on in the sequence, so make sure you're comfortable with that. And we'll work some example questions in the practice problems. Let's take a look at an ACT type example. Pause the video here and give this one a try and we'll come back and work it together. So this question asks, what is the tenth term in the sequence given by 5, 10, 20, 40, 80? First of all, we don't really know yet if this is an arithmetic or a geometric sequence. We're going to have to find the pattern, figure out which one those are, we could actually go through this and we are given five terms. We could go through and find the recursive values up to 10, but that could take a little bit of time. If you're able to plug in to the explicit formula, you may be able to get to the answer a little quicker, especially remember, like we said, if we're asked for the 100th term. But in this case, we're looking for the 10th. We want to look at what is our factor, or what is our common difference. And to go from 5 to 10, we can either add 5 or multiply by 2. To go from 10 to 20, we have to add 10, and so that's a difference from that adding 5. So we know this is not an arithmetic sequence, because then we see we can multiply 10 by 2 and get 20. So it looks like our factor is going to be 2. And that's how it works for each one of our values that we're given. So r is equal to 2 in this case. Our initial value was 5. We can use our formula. We're looking for the tenth term. And that's equal to that initial value, 5, 
times r to the n minus 1. So we'll plug in our values of 5, 2, and then we have a value of n is 10. We simplify here and we're going to have 5 times 2 to the 9th power and that equals 2,560, which is answer choice E.